Welcome back to Franchise Nation Radio, where we're here to go over a monthly recap, something we do here on Franchise Nation Radio. Every month, at the end of it, we do the recap. So this time, it is the August recap. And at the end of August, the Yankees are currently sitting at 66 and 64, third place in the AL East, and 17 and a half games behind the Red Sox in the AL East, as they are just running away with the division while in the wild card, they are one and a half games back. If the Yankees keep up how they were playing in the month of August, I don't see any reason why they couldn't make the playoffs as a wild card seed. Now, as far as hitting goes for the Yankees, the guys who are hitting are still hitting. The guys who are not hitting are still not hitting. You've got Alex Rodriguez leading the team in average 314. Average 13 home runs, 45 RBI. He leads the team in home runs. While Jacoby Ellsbury is an interesting stack because he is the leadoff man. He's been the leadoff man all season long. He's hitting 282, which is third on the team on average. He has nine home runs, which is second on the team in home runs. 50 RBI, which is the team lead, and he's the leadoff guy, and he leads the team in RBI. Is not exactly what you want there. He has 150, 140 hits, which leads the team as well. 70 runs, which leads the team. 38 doubles, which leads the team. And 47 stolen bases, which not only leads the team, it leads the entire Major League Baseball. Brett Gardner, who's hitting the two-hole all year long, hitting 286. Eight home runs, 48 RBI, 31 doubles, six triples, 31 stolen bases. And the only stat he's above Ellsbury in his average, he's second in average, Ellsbury's third. While Gardner is third in home runs on the team, he's second in RBI behind Ellsbury. He's second in doubles behind Ellsbury. He's second in triples behind Ellsbury, and he's second in stolen bases behind Ellsbury. And the one surprise in the month of August that really broke out has been Jose Perella. He has been tearing the cover off the ball. Been hitting home runs, it seems, left and right. He comes up big in every situation. He has multi-hit games like he was born to have multi-hit games. He's been hitting 284, 7 home runs, 16 RBI in the 37 games played and 134 at-bats he has in the big leagues because he has spent a good chunk of of the season in AAA and when he was in the big leagues prior to this month where he broke out he was down in the bench he was just the guy you put in there to fill in when somebody was tired maybe pinch hit but he wasn't hitting well he was about like hitting like 180 they start hitting well as a pinch hitter they put him in the lineup and he was raking so they just decided to keep him while Kevin Franzen has gone downhill now we flip things over to the pitching side of things for the Yankees Dylan Dellen is still Dylan Dellen 46 saves in that closer role, which is leading the American League because he overtook Koji Uehara because Koji Uehara lost his closer role for the Red Sox to Junichi Tazawa. So he's the closer for the Bo Sox out there in Boston now. And Masahiro Tanaka, 9-7 on the season so far, 3.40 ERA with 181 strikeouts and 164 innings. He is a big reason, along with Batansis, why this team leads the major leagues in strikeouts. Dylan Batances not only has 50, 46 saves, he also has a 1.13 ERA with 52 strikeouts and only 48 innings. And two surprises on the starting pitching side of things have been Adam Warren and Brian Mitchell. Adam Warren spent the majority of this season in the bullpen 6-5 with a 3.35 ERA in 31 games, 115 innings pitch and 96 strikeouts. But as of recently, he has been inserted into the rotation while Michael Pineda is out with his broken forearm. He will be back in September, though. And Adam Warren had a great start against the Houston Astros at home at Yankee Stadium. He pitched seven and a third, only gave up four hits, only one earned, and nine strikeouts on the day. A very solid start from Adam Warren, and he's been on fire ever since he came into the rotation. So they're going to keep him there while Pineda's out, and you don't know who's going to take his spot because Nova's also been solid. Avali's been solid, Tanaka's been solid, and even Brian Mitchell's been solid. So when Pineda comes back, you don't really know what they're going to do with him. Somebody's going to have to go to the bullpen. You don't know who that is going to be, but until now, it's like this. Well, Brian Mitchell's another guy who's been surprising. He's 2-0 in the two games started. He's started since being called up from AAA. He has a 4.61 ERA, but that's inflated due to one inning. We'll get into that a little bit. And he's got 13.2 innings pitched and 10 strikeouts. Now, what I'm talking about, and they've flayed it in one inning. He had a start in Boston at Fenway, where he had eight and a two-thirds pitched. 
He pitched eight and a two thirds. He was one out away from getting a complete game against the Red Sox. That would have cemented him as a stud pitcher coming in at AAA. He's great, keep him in the rotation. But he had the disastrous last batter where he just could not get anybody out. He only had one earned run leading up to that point, which was in the sixth inning. And then in the ninth, he tacked on three more on runs. So he pitched to eight and two thirds, only gave up eight hits all game long, four earned runs, two walks, six strikeouts. Now I'm assuming the majority of those runs, like I said, three of them, hits and walks came in that ninth inning. And despite that ninth inning, that last out that he could not get, he pitched spectacular all game long, and you cannot blame the guy himself for that. It's just he doesn't have enough stamina at that point. Joe Girardi left him in too long. You just can't blame him. He wanted to go for the complete game. He tried to go for the complete game. He couldn't get it. Maybe someday he'll be able to get it. But as of right now, you can't you can't knock the guy for a performance like that because of one inning where he was one out away from getting the complete game. And you may be asking yourself, why is Brian Mitchell and Adam Warren even in the rotation when you had Bartolo Colon and AJ Burnett? That's a good question. And that is because every single time Bartolo Colon and AJ Burnett pitched, as of recently, they did not do well at all. Bartolo Colon gave up tons of runs. He's in the bullpen now as the long reliever. He swapped with Adam Warren. While AJ Burnett. The Yankees just got fed up with what he was doing. They could not handle what he was doing anymore, and they designated him for assignment. And with good reason. He had a start in Toronto against his former team, the Blue Jays, where he only lasted two and a third. And in those two and a third, he gave up seven hits, six runs, four of them being earned, and he walked one. Not strong at all. We move on to his next start, where he was four and 11 after that start in Toronto. He got the loss. Now we move on to his next start at home against Cleveland, where he even did even worse. How did you get worse than the other one? I don't know, but he managed to do it. Only lasted one inning, gave up four hits in one inning, seven earned runs in one inning, and four walks in one inning. So they got fed up with what he was doing. They designated for him assignment. Now the one to five rotation goes Masahiro Tanaka, Nathan Avaldi, Avon Nova, who's been solid. Adam Warren, and Brian Mitchell. What they'll do with Pineda when he comes back, you don't know. They're going to move somebody to the bullpen. You don't know what it's going to be. Cologne will definitely end up being designated for assignment after Pineda comes back from injury. You don't know who's going to be in the bullpen. You don't know who's going to be in rotation. But as of right now, that is the one through five. And with that being said, that'll wrap things up here at Franchise Nation Radio for the August recap. We are heading into the month of September, and a heads up for the September recap. There will not be a September recap the second the month of September ends because the Yankees have a couple games, about two series in the month of October and early October. So instead of just doing an October recap for two series, we're going to combine September and October, and once those October regular season games ends, we'll do an end-of-season update video. So with that being said, that'll wrap things up here in Franchise Nation Radio. For the August recap, I've been your host, Jersey Born, and I'm saying goodbye. Push your seat back, the Ricky Henderson of rap, just hat, underneath a little blub, a lot of six-pack. Summertime, I caught the musket with the kickback, then sit back, stand up, eyes low, hit that. This happened continuously throughout the night, now my eyes are like diamonds, that's looking blue inside the light, like a prism. Shooting out hope, honor, and optimism, never stop until we coastal on the aqua mission.